So I have had a wonderful time uh, learning with you, uh, helping moderate things for you. Uh, and we have one more thing going on today, which is uh, very much a treat uh, of a lifetime for me. I would like to welcome back to the stage the 44th president of the United States and Michelle Obama's husband. Michelle Obama's husband. I had to go eat. <laughs> it, 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 nothing to be too excited about, I promise. <laughs> Convention center food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a big building, so I think you should assume that it was not a, any delicacies. No. That's Please. The, that's the after party. So, uh, Mr. President, hello. Hello. I want to acknowledge a moment that you helped me have in my life in 2008. It's election night, November, and I work for The Onion. I mean... America's finest news source. That, yeah, I have, to, I have to say, the, the, the Onion is solid. Solid. Good. Because you're going to Even I read The Onion. Where this goes next is fun. Uh, so I got to be the one to push publish on the story that The Onion ran when you were elected. Mm -hmm. Through social media, on the website, and still in print at the time, Black man given nation's worst job. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that headline, and that was you. I didn't write it, but I pressed publish, dang it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll give you some credit. Thank you. I accept that modest amount of credit. Listen, sir, I know you have been talking recently about our need for a healthier information ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You today made a strong case for not just an inclusive economy, but a reimagination of even how we define economy and our progress in that. When I look around, I see not only what you've described today in terms of some of the hardships and harshness, but I see a level of speed of change mm -hmm. that is be well beyond the hope and change you were talking about. Yes. Right? Climate change, too fast, too furious. Right. Economic change, too fast, too furious. And we also have technological change. Right. Amidst all that, democracy itself is struggling to keep up. Maintain relevance, maintain trust. How do you want us going forward to think about these things? Well, first of all, uh, I hope all of you have appreciated the amazing panels that uh, the foundation put together. Uh, I got a chance to catch some of them. Uh, many of these folks are people who I've had extensive conversations with. Uh, you know, for, uh, for them to put the time and the energy and the effort to come here, to brief us, and now for them to collaborate with some of our leaders and fellows around these issues, I think is remarkable. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll say this, and I, I mentioned this in my previous remarks. I genuinely believe these issues that we've been talking about are solvable and manageable. We can't, we can't arrive at perfect solutions to some of these things, but we can do better. Certainly better than we're doing now. But. It's okay to clap for better, y'all. Better is good. Better is good. But uh, whether we're talking about the economy, whether we're talking about uh, dealing with AI and its ramifications, whether we're talking about uh, misinformation and sort of the toxic uh, media environment. Uh, the, the prerequisite to solving these problems, the, the foundation, the ingredient that we're going to have to uh, get in the mix is how do we, starting with our personal interactions, our interactions uh, virtually, our interactions publicly in organizations, how do we see, listen, hear to each other in ways that allow us to meet and respect 
and um, recognize stories that can that are sort of the the threshold requirement for us to then engage in common work, right? For us to be able to work on climate change, work on uh, the economy. And so part of what I've been spending a lot of time thinking about, part of what I've discussed with a bunch of the folks, you know, in various smaller groups, part of what I've had discussions uh, about in, with young politicians, media figures, is you know, how do we balance this idea of diversity? We each have our own identities. We each are, have our own stories. We understand the power of narratives. And I think this generation in particular very much wants to talk about you know, who's controlling the narrative and making sure that underrepresented groups are there and women's stories are there and the African-American story is there, the, the conversations we're having right now about uh, the crisis in the Middle East. You know, a lot of that is around competing narratives and that's right. And then the question is, how do we then take that understanding that Everybody's stories matter. That we can't just look at the world through one lens. How do we do that and then still find the possibility of finding common ground? And then still aspire to understanding and empathy and collaboration? And, and what language can we use? And what organizations and structures can we employ to encourage that uh, rather than the opposite? because right now it feels like it's going in the opposite direction. We, we really don't hear each other. We really don't see each other. And uh, if we can't break through that, then we'll never get to all the wonderful ideas and amazing projects that are out there. We may be able to do it on, on small scales in communities in which everybody kind of agrees with each other, but we won't be able to do it at the scale of nations, certainly not internationally. Um, now, here's the good news. I think people are starting to instinctively understand that the levels of polarization that we're at right now is not helping anybody, except maybe some talking heads and folks on TikTok. Um, who are monetizing it, by the way. Thank you. Um, so people kind of sense ah, this isn't healthy, but we don't kind of know how to get out of it. And part of what I, I'm hoping, uh, let me plant a seed for all of us so that when we reconvene next year, uh, we're, 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 we've got some concrete answers. I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of time thinking about how do we um, create concrete practices and language that at, at simultaneously recognizes people's unique experiences, but also says, um, I can still, not, not only can I see you, but I actually really do understand, and I really do think that you and I have something in common and we have a project together to make your life better, my life better. Um, and that may involve um, creative ways of organizing on the ground. It may involve what we've already talked about, new forms of media. Um, and it's, but it's also going to involve, I think, kind of a leap of faith on people's parts. We're too comfortable right now with the idea that the other side are idiots and hateful and can't, you can't be reasoned with. We're, we're a little too comfortable right now with that idea. Um, and some folks are crazy. Thank you. How do we get out of but, that? But the majority are not. And, and, um, and, and I, I'm, 
I speak now as a progressive. I actually think that um, if you believe in democracy, if you believe in, in bottom-up progress, you ha it does require you to have a cautious optimism about the goodness of other people. Because if you don't have that, if, if you don't think that, that this person across the void for me can understand me, because you know, if, if you don't think uh, a man can understand and sympathize with uh, uh, a woman who's, who's, who's experienced you know, sexual harassment or, or, or uh, been passed over for a job despite being more qualified, if, if you don't think that, if you're a black person and you do not think that a, a white person is, is qualified to understand and empathize with your experience or your people's experience in a sincere and open way. Um, and by the way, if you don't believe that that person who's not like you has, doesn't have standing to then also call you out if sometimes you are not seeing them, because you've decided that your status, uh, uh, your identity, your story immunizes you from being questioned. If that's how our conversations are set up, then we're not going to make a lot of progress. So I, I want to. So I, so. I, so so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go, you know, away for. Uh, you know what. 11 months. I don't mean literally go away, but I, I'll be, <laughs> People are like, Wait, I'll, be, I'll be leaving the forum and I'm going to be really stewing over this and giving uh, yourself some homework. I'm hoping I'm giving myself some homework and I'm giving all of you some homework. People here are already working on this issue in a very, in very concrete ways, um, both here in this country and in other countries where these divisions and these forces of polarization are operating. Um, uh, so together, hopefully, we can do a little brainstorming, all right? Yes, yes, yes we can, yes we will. Uh, we, are, we are winding this thing down, and I just want to take a moment uh, to close this whole forum out with an expression of gratitude. My mother never lived to see your presidency, but she saw your momentum, mm -hmm. she felt it, and I got to experience it. And one of the things I learned from you, it was an indirect lesson by being a part of the campaign as a volunteer. You innovated in three ways. You innovated in how a candidate can communicate out to the people, social media, all that. You innovated in how a candidate can listen and take in from the people, including money. I gave a lot of money. Um, you didn't have that much money. See, why you, oh, so but, true. I was broke, hilarious. But, <laughs> but for you, it was some serious it was money. Significant portion. It was of like a some tiny net it worth. Was, it was. It was like Starbucks money. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was I dinner understand. money, bro. Yeah. Way more than Starbucks money. Sometimes <laughs> rent money. But it was Happy Meal money. I wasn't counting, but I have receipts. <laughs> but the third, the third way you innovated, and I found this the way the campaign operated. We did our own thing. We came up with our own literal playlist. We met each other, found each other, and built something together. And I realized this dude has just created an excuse for us to see each other. Yeah, I you like that. stepped away enough to get out of the way enough for us to see each other. And before your presidency, you were doing that. During your presidency, you were doing that. And to see what this foundation is up to, mm -hmm. inspiring, empowering, connecting, you're still consistently doing that. So thank you. You say we need to see each other, and you're helping us do it. And I like that. That is, that is walking the talk, and we need more of that. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate the contribution, but those words made me feel even better. Good. Thank you. I got more. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. We'll see you at the reception and the thank parties and everything. Love you. All right.